Hey everybody, it's Joe Fami. I'm here with my good friend Sang Lucci. How you doing, my friend? What's going on, Fami? What's going on, man? Uh, all is good. All is good. I just wanted to do this talk. You know, we'll put it out on Twitter later. Uh, just uh, mainly to talk about market psychology because that seems to be a topic everybody wants to hear about, and you are one of the masters. Um, <laughs> I remember. I'm going to tell a quick story. Uh, there's an awesome Traders for a Cause event that um, was on a Saturday, Sunday, and it ended at one o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And you told and we were in Vegas. We were in Vegas. And we were in Vegas. It's a Sunday afternoon and not every could have gone to the pool. Everyone could have gone to whatever. And Vegas has a lot of options as we know. And you said at one o'clock, you said, hey, if you guys want to hang around in about an hour, we have the room for the whole day. We're just going to do a sort of casual meetup. And it was at two o'clock and I showed up and I was shocked everybody, no, I mean, I don't mean shocked, like I just, I, there's a, like we said, there's a lot of shit to do in Vegas. Everybody yeah. showed up and not only did everybody show up from two till about, we had the room till five, two and a half hours, not one person left the room. And what, yeah. really, what really resonated with me, you brought Tom Canfield on stage, which was a great talk. You brought Nate, um, Nate Michaud from Investors Live and, and just people were participating. What resonated with me is everyone wants to talk about trading psychology. Cause that's really, you know, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, the mental game is what everybody wants to talk to. And that's why I've been dying to talk to you and, you know, do a couple talks with you to, to you know, to discuss those things. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the support too, man. Like me and family, we go, we go way back. We go way back. We have always followed each other. Like since I was living in New York, like I knew him and, and Zortrades, Zortrades, I met up with him while I was in New York. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, I never got to, to meet up with, but we've been, you know, it's that kind of weird Twitter verse where you get to know people and you never actually see them, but like, you know them, you know what I mean? You, 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 you feel like you really know them. Yeah. And you know, I mean, me and you could literally just be at a bar and, and just kicking it, man. And I knew that since like the first time I had a conversation with you and Zora, I remember meeting, I remember actually meeting you for the first time. Where was it? We were at some conference. You and Zora were there. I think it was in New York. It was, it was one of the New York. Yeah. Maybe it was one of those. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of the Benzinga meetups or something, man. Yeah, Zor and, and I were by the bar. I remember that. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and watching your presentation, I'm like, these boys are so New York, man. And I love that. That's I love funny. that about, about you and Zor, man, and about Wall Street Jesus as well. He's from New York. Um, you know, yeah. most people have no idea who the hell he is. But, you know, you put us all in the same room. We're, we're a piece in a pod, man. Yeah, no, it's great stuff. The first thing I wanted to get into is, you know, one thing I've been dying to, you know, ask you about is you're one of the traders I know of at least that's very intense, very concentrated. Uh, you put a lot of your stuff out there, a lot of, uh, you know, your P and L and so forth. I mean, it's Twitter, so I never lose, you know that. Um, so I don't, <laughs> I have no, I have no losses to put out there. That's hashtag sarcasm <laughs> for people who fucking take me seriously. I lose all the time. I lose all the time, by the way. But anyways, I think for, to achieve superior returns and for people who are intense traders, I personally, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think it involves concentration. It involves, you know, a concentrated number of positions and it involves, it involves taking a little bit more risk or a little bit more, um, you know, stomach than most people can deal with. And I always say do what works for you, but I wanted to ask you since, you know, I see sort of like, I, I think I'm, you know, at times can be pretty intense myself. I see a little bit of that and a, a more of that in you. And I want to talk to you about, you know, what does it take for people who are, you know, looking to achieve those things or who say, you know what, I just can't do that. Or I can't take that, you know, big of a position or I'm not comfortable with that. I always say do what works for you, but for the people who are looking to achieve that, like what type of, you know, what are the ups and downs? What's the mental preparation? What are the, you know, if you, I, maybe it's sort of a broad question, but if you wanted to kind of take it from there. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many ways you could answer this. And the answer to this question changes as you evolve in your career as a trader. So naturally, what you know, and what you think you know, is going to change 
and you're going to look back at your previous trading self like, damn, man, I was such a fucking jackass. There was so much dumb shit that I did. Yeah. There was so much dumb ways that I was thinking. I can't believe it and blah, blah, blah. So you know what? To cut through all the bullshit and get right to the truth of it, uh, I'm baking some chicken over here. So let me pop this it's up. Good. In cook, here. cook up whatever you got to do. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, we'll make this a cooking show. Like if, you want, show. if you want to pull out some ingredients and share some recipes, whatever you want to do, man. I'm actually making some uh, some some Indian food down here because in Puerto Rico you can't get Indian food. There's no fucking Indian restaurant down here. So my mother shipped me down all these masalas and stuff that we use to to put in the curries, put in chicken yeah. curry, put in yeah. everything, and and that's what I do, man. So so that that's kind of like the lead off. It's like I'll tell you the secret, and then boom, the shit cuts off. And we go into little diet tribes. So this is how I'm going to answer this um, this question. And I lost my fucking train of thought just right. Well, no, it's just it's just more of like the the you know what's it take? Because I want to say this: like most people will okay, say, "Well, okay. does it does it?" Go ahead, go ahead. You remember your train of thought? Go ahead. Go I got ahead. it. I got it. It's like the market is a way to see yourself. The market has always been a way to see yourself, provided you're paying attention. So in the beginning, you're going to trade, and no matter what, you're not aware of your – so let's just assume that we're talking about a 22-year-old right now, 21-year-old coming out of college, opens up a Robinhood account, and – starts with 10 racks and all of a sudden, you know, the kid's sitting on 50,000 because he put it because he put it all in fucking Tesla. There's a way that you're going to think about yourself after those things happen. Now, you're not going to understand anything else until the market does something to you, aka, you know, market changes, you lose all this fucking money. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, you're forced to reconcile with yourself in a much different fashion. It's like, yo, I thought I knew what the fuck I was doing. I just lost all my money. Uh, what the, what, you know, <laughs> what the hell am I going to do now? Am I going to try this shit again? Am I going to double down on this? Am I going to give up and am I going to go back to work? The market is a way to cut through to see yourself, provided you're paying attention. If you're not paying attention, it's going to throw you around like a motherfucking rag doll. It's going to give you the best highs. It's going to give you the worst lows. And you, you'll just kind of flow with it. You'll just kind of allow. It's like being stuck uh, uh, in the worst wave or worst current uh, in the ocean. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. going to throw you around like crazy. I don't know if you ever tried kite surfing. But if you're out there holding that motherfucking kite up there and that kite is flying 50, 50 feet above you, it's going to take you wherever the fuck that thing wants to go, provided you don't know how to control the thing. Yeah. So the market is the, is the easiest way to cut through to see yourself. All your faults, all of your, your strengths, all of your weaknesses, all of your fears, all of the guilt, all anything that you have pent up all around up in here, the market is going to show you that, provided you're paying attention. And if you're paying attention you can start to control that energy that you're putting out there. You can start to, 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 to visualize it. You can start to control it. You can start to realize that, okay, there's a mental process that I need to go through in order to, to be the most aware that I can be. And then you can really start reining in some of your shitty decision-making, some, some of the negative thoughts, some of the fears that you have, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. that's how... I want to answer that question. And by the way, that's only after years, you know, almost two decades of doing this shit. I mean, you've been in this game longer than me, man. And, and you already know, man, you've gone through so many cycles, so many yeah. emotional cycles, because life is always going to throw some shit at you, you know, yeah. whether it's your family stuff or whether it's a business thing or whether COVID just fucked your, your, your whole life up and you lost everything on some other shit and you come to the market to solve your problems. The market is always going to show you yourself, provided you're fucking listening. And if you're not listening, it's going to throw you around like a motherfucking rag doll. And if you are listening, it's still going to throw you around like a rag doll. But guess what? You're going to be able to look at it and be like, I'm good. I'm okay. You know, I took this loss. I took this gain. I'm good. 
Everything is good. So when you said as provided you're paying attention, you're talking about self-awareness. 100%. 100%. Which is which is huge because you're basically saying if you're just in the market and you have no clue about yourself or you're not really paying attention, then you're just like you're just setting yourself up for slaughter. 100%. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because don't, don't forget the chicken. You're going to burn the chicken if you don't get back yo, to the yo, kitchen. I got that shit baking for 40 minutes, baby. I'm good. <laughs> All um, right. You know, so, so yeah. So the, again, the market will show you where you are at. And if you, if you come to the market with some half-ass shit, and if you come to the market asking for it to solve your problems, and let's call problems both positive or negative. Let's say you're trying to, you know, finance a couple of projects that you have. Let's say you're trying to make back losses. Let's say you're trying to build a future for your kids. Let's say you're trying to do whatever it is yeah. that you come to the market for. You know, if you come to the market with the wrong energy and that expectation is going to put you on your ass. It just, this is what it is. Yeah. And what I was trying to say before is, you know, when I talk about superior returns, some people might say, well, Joe, isn't that what everyone's going for? You'd be surprised. Like one, a lot of people aren't going for superior returns and that's fine if they have a different risk tolerance, but also Mm -hmm. a Mm -hmm. lot of people aren't really thinking that. Like one thing I love about you know, Carl Icahn and Kobe Bryant both said the same thing. When you're going to be excellent at something, it involves a little bit of an obsession. You know, Bro, like, I mean. I have been obsessed with um, The Last Dance, man. I watch an episode. Oh, so good. Every day. I watch so an episode every day. And I watch this man make some of the decisions that he makes. And I watch him just cut right through what it is that he want. He always knew what he wanted and that was it. It was, that was it. That was it. That's all he wanted. He knew how to get there. He just had to bring, you know, he just had to bring people along with him. And again, like he, of course you have help. You have your coaches, you got your parents, you got Phil Jackson, you know, you got, you got all these people around you, but it's his energy. It was his energy, you know, that, that, that wanted it, man. And when I, when I watched that man just talk about making the decisions that he makes and trying to win, you know, and some of the stuff that he had to deal with, like, bro, that's it right there. I, it, that's the it. amount I, – I love that you brought this up because the amount of intensity in that documentary is amazing. And I think of everything, especially sports, in terms of trading. Absolutely. And all I'm doing is listening to this and I'm like, I can associate with this mentality for trading. And I tweeted something like that out and a couple people laughed and said, bro, take it easy. Like this is, you know, how you, they're not even close to the same. And I'm like, fuck Bullshit. you. They're totally the same. Totally they're totally the same. the same because you know what? Kind of like what Jordan said, that's because you never won anything. I've tweeted that. I've tweeted anything. out that video because you know what? You know, you haven't been there yet. You haven't achieved the triple digit year. You, you yes. know, like you haven't gone for that excellence. Now, I get it. There's some people who are risk averse, retired. They'd be happy with three, four percent in the bank. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah. about for traders. To me, yeah. what makes someone excellent is yeah. one word is consistency. Yeah. That's what yeah. makes someone excellent because I've used this example before. Talk about Michael Jordan. Why is he the best in the game? Not because he scored 30 points in one game. It's because he averaged 30 points per game over a 15 or 20 year career. Why is Paul Tudor Jones one of the best money managers out there? Because he was positive one year? No, because he was positive, what's the key word? Consistently for 20 something years, he didn't have a down year for whatever it was, 23, 27 years. I forget what the streak is. My point is to achieve that consistency and to achieve that excellence in sports, individual sports, team sports, trading, I don't care if you're a lawyer and you're trying to win trials consistent, whatever you're trying to do involves a lot of mental toughness. And I think how it relates to trading is 80% of its psychology. And to prove your point, let's go through the history. Let's go through my history. Okay. And let's relate it to sports and performance and high performance. Like I've always had talent and how many athletes have crazy talent. I mean, we even saw Jordan's progression when he was a kid in in high school. Granted, of course, natural talent they have. But if they didn't have the work ethic, B.J. Armstrong said it about Scottie Pippen in the in the in the um, in the series. He was like Scottie Pippen had natural talent. What he didn't have 
and what the rest of the team didn't have was Michael's work ethic. I'm 24. I'm 24 at the time. I was a fucking young kid. I had skills and I had the I had the want, man. I wanted it so much. I made it about my whole being to to get this and to achieve this this you know this million dollars in the market and shit. And again, I'm 24. That's all I wanted. I didn't know anything that came after it, nor did I plan for it either, right? I made it, 24, 25, right? I hit like two, 2.9, gave most of it to my pops, and I had a solid chunk. And I fucking blew it. I blew it. I blew it. I lost half of it in one trade, and then I took a break, and then I spent it, spent it all. I spent it all because I thought the goal was getting it. I never understood consistency. I never understood. I didn't even understand that. When somebody told me about consistency, I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck you. There's just something old people <laughs> yeah, you're, say. You're young, we're young and we don't, we don't, we're, we don't oh, know any just, better. That's just something old people say, man. That's just, you know, that's fuck that shit. Who are you, you, call, who you calling old? Who are you calling old? <laughs> <laughs> right? Lost it. Pissed it away. And then I was like, probably, I probably had like 50 grand left. And by the way, at that point, I was doing it for... I made that money for everybody else. I made that money to prove to everybody else, to my family, to, to friends. And I was like, you know, trying to be the man. And, and anybody that came to me with a business idea, I was like, yeah, fuck it. You want 50 grand to start a bar? All right, here, take it. Investing in people that had no fucking clue what the fuck they were doing, man. Yeah. And that was me at 24. So boom, lost it. Had to take that lesson, right? Jordan comes back from baseball, gets fucking smoked. And then what does he, what does he do? You can feel the, the, the loss motivated him. The losing motivates him. Something about the losing motivates him. All right. So I, I end up on my ass. So then it's like, okay, we got to reinvent ourselves. So I created saying Lucci. I start writing articles because I always used to love to write. And I start writing all these satire uh, articles about finance. I was like, you need to buy Chipotle because I've never seen so many fucking white people standing outside of Mexican Mexican <laughs> restaurant to buy motherfucking burritos, like buy this IPO. It's a St. Lucie upgrade. I started writing bullshit like that, yeah. you know? And then all of a sudden, like people started responding to it on Twitter. Okay, get another hundred racks to start trading again. Okay, end up in New York, start a hedge fund, make all these millions back. All of a sudden, grow, grow, grow a business to 20 freaking employees and all this kind of stuff. But then again, my ego got in the way. My ego got in the way. It was like, okay, now you're the man again. You're doing all this other stuff. And now there's so much other shit attached to you. That pressure fucked me up again. So I had to go through it again. I wasn't there yet. It, it didn't click yet. Consistency and longevity didn't click yet. I needed another lesson. You know, and people will look at those lessons like people will look at those losses and they'll give up. They'll they'll fucking give up. Jordan right. could have given up. Jordan could have given up. Like he he couldn't win a championship for a while because you know the team or whatever. He could have given up. This so how many athletes do we know and do we see come into the fold? They got great skills and give up. Maybe they last two three years or whatever and they give up. So that's yeah. most traders too. That's most traders. They so, got some skills. Maybe they make some money and boom, let me fast forward to, uh, to now. Then I end up back on my ass in my motherfucking parents' basement. Just like what? Just hating myself, hating life, hating everybody too, because I'm just, pro I'm just projecting my misery onto anyone. Okay. And then finally, finally, you start just getting over the self you know, beating up yourself or whatever, and you go back at it. This time, when I went back at it, I knew, I knew, I knew. I felt it. I was like, okay, I got my confidence back, and it took me a while. It, this shit takes years. It took me years. And I got my confidence back, and when I got my confidence back, I knew, man, I was making all the right moves that time. Moving to Puerto Rico, not paying the taxes, you know, living under my means, making all the right moves, and then slowly, slowly, slowly stacking. Finally, you're hitting a million again. You're hitting a couple mil the next year. You're, you're, and you're not paying the taxes. So now it's like, okay, I got the foundation. I got everything here. And now it doesn't matter anymore. It just doesn't, doesn't matter whether I win or lose. It doesn't matter because I'm not doing it for anybody else. I'm not doing it for the ego and shit. I'm doing it for the consistency, the longevity. And it took me years, man. 
to figure that shit out. So, so that's the you made me think of a question when people are struggling or they hit rock bottom, like you said, or Jordan struggle, whatever, who, whatever you're struggling with. Yeah. What are some tips or what are some things that go through your mind or advice you could give people, you know, for people. Yeah. And I know we've all been through, you read market wizards. One thing, almost sure. all of them have in common is, is they all blew up at some point, sure. myself this included and everything else. How do you get that drive, mental toughness, whatever you want to call it, to turn yourself, pick yourself up and turn things around? So check it out. Just like I said, when the market shows you yourself and it shows you your, let's say, immaturity, it shows you how weak you are. It shows you how, how not mentally tough you are. It shows you how biased you are. It shows you, you know, errors in your decision making. It shows you all that kind of stuff. And as you grow in your career as a trader, your outlook on losses, your outlook on failure, your outlook on all that stuff starts to blossom into a world where you realize you can't win without the, the shit. You cannot win without the shit. So now when it happens to me, I'm like, this is great. This is the lesson I needed. And boom, there's no attachment to it anymore. That's what it was for me. When you're starting out and you take those kind of losses, you got way too much attachment. You got way too much attachment to what you had, to the shit of what it could us, to you know, whatever life you thought you had, whatever life you thought you wanted, all that shit. You got too much attachment. And once you start to burn that, it's sky, sky is the motherfucking limit, man. Because the yeah. only thing that got in the way when you were fucking up was you. Was you. It's always just you. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't release. You couldn't release it. There was no way for you to release it. And the only way for you to release it and get the release was you falling smack down on your ass, losing whatever you needed to, because that was the, that was the only way. That's the only way. Yeah. Otherwise, you sit in limbo. There's so many people in this world that sit in limbo without a, without a North Star, without a, 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 you know, without a reason. And they are all thinking about that one failure that fucked them up and they could never get fucking past it. There has to be a way that you can let it go. So whatever that way is for you, that has to be the way, you know? So some people, you know, shit, I don't know. For me now, it's like a nice meditation, some yoga. I'll do some boxing. Oh, I'm good. Man. I'm good. Yeah. Well, before, before, oh, family, man, I would sit in my fucking basement and just watch the same movies over and over and over again. Eating a lot of meatloaf, I'm sure, huh? Eating, oh, just eating so bad. Taco Bell, steak and cheese, man. Oh, now you're making and me hungry. You, and then you would just become this person that you didn't like. And you knew it. You knew what you were doing, but you fucking did it anyway because now it became a habit. And then all that self-loathing becomes a habit because there's no release. There's no letting it go. Yeah, you know, I think I'm, I'm going to pull up one of your tweets, by the way. But I think your point you're making is... A lot of it, exercise, meditation, gratitude really, really helps turning things around. 100%, 100%. I love this tweet you had. It got a lot of traction. It says, if you miss an opportunity in life, you weren't ready for it. Get your shit together because the next one's coming right around the corner. If you mix the miss the next one after that and so on, maybe you'll start effing around and get your shit together. My first question is, does Andrew Dice Clay write your tweets for you or? <laughs> Dice. Dice was great, man. Dice was so different in his time. Like he was so ahead of his time, man. Dice love, was great, bro. He Dice. was from New York too. He was from Brooklyn too, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, man. So yeah, um, I mean, what, what, so tell me a little bit because this tweet got a lot of traction. I saw it go through my stream a lot last month. What, um, you know, yeah. touch a little bit upon that. So, you know, with yeah. opportunities. I mean, was you talking about just life trading, everything? I, I'm always talking about everything because to me, everything is connected. And, and, you know, same to your point about when you try to make a connection, like with athletes to, to market, some people get it and some people don't like, to me, there's a connection with everything. So people miss opportunities. I miss opportunities. And we're talking about trading, man. There's a motherfucking opportunity every second, every, every fraction of a second, there's an opportunity that you didn't even know about. There's yeah. thousands of them that you didn't even know about because you don't even trade half of that shit. I look at what Nate trades. I don't trade none of that shit. I sat next to him in that office in New Hampshire, but I didn't have to trade what he traded to know exactly what the fuck was going on with him and for, and for him to know exactly what was going on with me. But too often, Everybody misses an opportunity 
and they either beat themselves up about it or they start blaming other things for missing that opportunity. When in reality, like, yo, you weren't fucking, you weren't even in that state of mind. Your dumbass was not gonna buy Tesla at $26 on the IPO and hold that shit till 2000 today. You, you, you weren't even thinking about it. You, you weren't gonna buy Bitcoin because you didn't even, your, your whole life you've been talking shit about crypto and now you wanna tell somebody some coulda, woulda, shoulda because you didn't buy, uh, you didn't buy Bitcoin at fucking 2000. So that meme about Apple, that's going around left and right about that dude who, who got gifted shares or something like that when the IPO came out and he held it till now and da 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 da, da. You'll see memes like that and I'll be like, oh. oh. yeah, or like Steve Wozniak sold part of his, you know, as Apple and it'd be worth whatever, yeah. I've heard you know what I'm saying? It's like you weren't even in the state of mind. You weren't even thinking about it. You didn't even have the capital. So why are you going to beat yourself up about that shit? Jordan said it. Why would I? Why would I freak out? Why would I worry about a shot that I never fucking took? That's what he said in one yeah. of those in one of those episodes. Why would I worry about a shot that I never made? And that's it. You know, the, the same kind of principle right there. We 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 beat ourselves up about missing an opportunity, but you missed it for a motherfucking reason. You weren't I, there. I think part. There. I think part of the the thing that misses messes people up is I personally think social media is unbelievably toxic. In the, in, the, in the sense of, I don't mean the hate, because there's a lot of awesome people. I've met you and a lot of great people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah. about the FOMO. I'm talking about those opportunities. When you see everyone tweeting about Tesla or everyone tweeting about whatever's going up that day. Yep. And then you have this insecurity. A lot of people have this insecurity of like, well, wait a minute. I don't own that. Everyone's talking about it, and then there's that fear of missing out. And and it's and my point is too many people talk on social media about or they have this feeling that everybody's doing so much better than they really are. Fucking okay, April. And and I'm I say this in every episode. I wish Candy was with us in every episode of the market rant. I always tell people I screw up all the time. Just because you got 50,000 followers and I've been lucky to do some TV and I've been blessed with a lot of things in my life doesn't mean I'm just printing money all day, you know? And I tell people I screw up all the time. I just try to minimize those mistakes and, and, and correct them quickly. And, but people's perception of, Oh, that guy's a great trader. He's got a hundred thousand followers. I'm like, that bitch doesn't even have an E-Trade account. What are you talking about? I mean, how's a chicken coming along? I'm coming over for dinner. <laughs> chicken's, chicken's halfway there, baby. Chicken's but halfway there. Someone man. told me one time that, oh, this guy's got a lot. Uh, this guy's a great trader. And I said, and I, it was someone I know, I won't mention the name, who doesn't even trade. And they said, well, they got a lot of followers and he's a great trader. And I was like, that guy doesn't even have an e trade account. What are you talking about? Don't get mad, get e trade. You know? And my point is, people, now, now I'm just rambling, but my point is, people have these insecurities, they see stocks running, or they think, oh, this guy's doing great, or this girl's doing great, or whatever. We all struggle, but my point is stop being so damn concerned with what everybody else is doing. If you want to use social media for some you know, news, ideas, whatever, that's fine, but focus more on yourself, because this obsession with, you know, like David Coggins says, social media isn't who we are, it's who we want to be. You know, it's, and it happened to me. It, happened, that, but, but go ahead, it, yeah. it happened to me. There was this um, there was this tennis instructor down here in uh, in Puerto Rico. Yeah, he was a tennis instructor, man. He went all in on Bitcoin, and that's how he made like you know, I would probably say maybe a mil mil and change. Okay. And then he goes all in again on Chainlink. I don't know if you know this crypto, but this 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 Chainlink ICO, I think. Maybe 20 cents or some shit. He went all in on it. I don't know how much he put down exactly, but the fucking thing hit 20 bucks the other day. Shit hit 20 bucks the other day. And I'm literally down there. To, I'm, I'm, I'm in Puerto Rico. And by the way, you meet all these kinds of people down here in Puerto Rico because you, the second you start making some money, everybody's coming to Puerto Rico to not pay the taxes. So that's, that's just what's happening. And you're yeah. finding people left and right. Like I met this dude the other day who had the largest... Uh, poker hand in history. It was one hand alone where he made like two and a half mil. Okay. Took it down for two and a half mil. That was, that was the that was the one hand. But anyways, yeah. um, 
They and this guy, the guy still is in this this crypto. He's still. He's crypto. still in that shit. He's still in that shit. Probably hit like twenty mil. Probably hit 20, 25. I don't know. Something crazy. Okay. And then uh, I'll get hit up all the time, like Tesla, you know. And then the 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 Robin Hooders. I'm hearing kids, nineteen year old kids, taking a five thousand dollar account and turning it to two hundred fifty thousand, you know. And that was me. That was me when I was a kid, you know, because. Options is options. It's the same shit. You get a mover like one to thirty dollars every motherfucking day. It just it just depends on are you there or not. If you're lucky so, to hit it or not, yeah. So it happened to me, and I felt a certain kind of way. And I was trying. I've changed my strategy this year from last year. Last year I was in a I was in a state of mind where I wasn't forcing anything. I was just writing options, making a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand a month. And I really had a, I, I had my best year mentally, as well as dollars wise, as well as life wise and the whole nine last year. Now this year, because of all that noise, I'm starting to attack the market like I used to trying to catch a, trying to pull a short off. Now, number one, I'm fucking wrong on the short anyway. And then I got to do damage control every time I'm wrong on the shit. But the real reason why I'm pushing so hard is because of the noise the noise sometimes it gets to me so we're not me and family are not here telling you that we're better than this shit we're not here no. saying that we don't do that shit and we're not here talking to y'all like hating on y'all and being like listen don't don't think about the noise we're here as one of you guys and saying that yo the shit is the shit is the ups and downs and you always have to come back to yourself. There's no other choice. There's no other way around it. You know what I mean? You're gonna you gotta, lose, you gotta, you're gonna you gotta lose gotta track own, of yourself. You gotta own your own shit. You can't be pointing fingers and blaming you people can't. or blaming whatever. You, I mean, we're here to tell people we're experienced traders. We screw up all the time. But, you know, hey, forget knock down seven times, get up eight. For me, it's get knocked down 7,000 times and get up 7,001. And, and you have to understand and accept that losses and bumps along the way is part of it and it's like if you really want to excel what do you think it's just some free ride i mean i want to pull up one of my tweets because um this got a little traction and i, I had some i got some emails on this one and I, I think you can comment on this one um and i was basically saying people's views on the markets are usually influenced by the investing period they grew up in the experience their parents went through and sometimes what's going on in their personal lives. And I have some comments on that one, but if you want to, you know, maybe yeah, what, what, I, what comes, I, what comes to mind right away? What comes to mind right away is the new generation of traders because it's so in your face and bold right now, the voices that we're hearing talking about trading the new kids that are coming up, the 17 year olds, the 19 year olds, the 20 year olds that are trading Robin Hood aggressively, aggressively just figuring out options right now and creating houses where they'll compete. Like they, they literally started to gamify trading. Not to say that this shit hasn't been present before. I mean, the second E-Trade came out, you know, we were seeing this. We already seen cycles of this. Yeah. So your environment is going to dictate how you look at the market. So if all your friends are, are trading a motherfucking Robin Hood account and talking about quitting engineering school because they just made, you know, 20 racks on, on Amazon, what the fuck you think you're going to do? You know what I mean? You're going to yeah. sit there and, and not to say it's a negative thing or a bad thing or whatever. You're just naturally going to be like, damn, maybe I can do that shit too. So you're going to go about it your way. And so many new participants are trading in this market. Now, guess what? The stock environment tells them one thing, buy the shit and buy it all and fucking buy a call. Tomorrow you'll make some money. Now, when the market changes, that whole environment is going to have to learn new patterns, is gonna to have to learn new behaviors. And the cycle just repeats itself. It slowly, slowly, slowly just repeats itself. So I came into the market, 2006, 2007, and when literally the market crashed, or 2008 or whatever, market crashed, that was the first time that I got exposed to that. My whole firm blew the fuck up. 
they blew the fuck up after the short happened and then the long side hit all the people that were making crazy money when i walked in there people were making ten thousand dollars a day 15 grand a day they disappeared man they what they disappeared i seen one other one of them working in a motherfucking chili's bro working at a fucking chili's man it blew my mind when i went back to that hometown and seen him working at the damn chili's man it blew my fucking mind and See, these were you, guys that were making crazy money. You grew up in 06, 07. I started in 97, 98. Yeah, so the first yeah. part when I said your, your views on the market are, invest, are influenced by the period you grew up in, sure. all I saw was back then, the Robin Hood of back then, it didn't matter, like online trading, whether it was Ameritrade, E-Trade, you know, with uh, Fidelity, whatever, like all started offering Schwab on online trading. And... A bunch of my friends were in our 20s. They put money in. There was no weekly options. It was just regular monthlies yep. and not, yep. uh, not that many stocks. But I want to make a couple points is it went on for like 18 months. Boom. So all these people who say, because one lesson I've learned is moves in the market and in stocks go on way longer than anyone can imagine in both directions, mm -hmm. in both directions. So mm -hmm. when everyone's like up, Everyone's open up a Robinhood account. That's it. It's the top. I'm like, this is nowhere close to it because <laughs> we started in 97 and saw like, um, it was like yes. an Asian, Asian debt crisis and then it took a hit. And then 98 was a nice boom. And then Russian debt crisis, long-term capital blew up. And then October 8th, 98, from that low till March of 2000 was 18 months of not... The NAS, nonstop, the NASDAQ 100 was up 92% in 99. That's an oh, index. Man. That's an exactly. index. The average stock, it's 100 stocks in there. The average stock was a double. Qualcomm, yeah, exactly. So Qualcomm, you've seen this before. You've seen this play out before. My point is it went on for a while, and Qualcomm was up like 3,300%. That's why I tweeted out when I saw something in like Tesla around 800. I said Tesla is the Qualcomm of 99, meaning this is the crack stock that's just going to go nuts. Just like, you know, Qualcomm, there's a lot of similarities. And people are like, well, the fundamentals, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the psychology. Yes, I'm talking about the, psychology, the behavior. The behavior. behavior of the stock. Yeah. So my point is, it went on for a long time. But going back to influence by that period, I don't want to say I'm always going to lean bullish. But all I saw was friends putting in, you know, 10 grand. Back then, the Robin Hood of the day, 10 grand, 40 grand, whatever they had, 5 grand and turning into an insane amount of money, half a million and up. I had a friend on Qualcomm, he made a million dollars in one day. We're 20 something years old. Amazing. He made a million dollars in one day on options because Qualcomm went from whatever, 400 to 1,000. He called me up at noon, he's like, dude, I just made a million dollars. He's like 23 years old, 20, like, it was insane. Yo, and what happened to that kid? What happened to that kid? Where's he at now? He's at the Chili's with your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we're not laughing at no, him. No, no, no. He, he's, he's a good friend, but he blew up. He blew up. <sighs> he never cashed out. And he, he said, he goes, he goes, dude, I'm a millionaire. He called me up at lunch. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you know those Qualcomm calls? He had like two or three of them. But all you need is a few of them that are worth 600 a pop. Whatever he had, I know maybe it's split four from whatever he had. He's like, I go cash out cash out and he was like you know it's still like the fear and the greed and the emotions are the same but i grew up in that period so i'm always like leaning bullish my point is people who grew up and walked right into 07 08 and shorting worked and they saw lehman blow up and bear stearns and people listen to this are like yeah thanks a hole i worked there i whenever i mention them there's always someone who worked at bear stearns and hates my guts but point is like they saw disasters they saw you know, oil drop and they saw all these names and like reliable names go get cut 90%. So their mentality is the market sucks and everything's going to go down. My mentality growing up in a nice bull market is I lean bullish. A lot of people got into the market around 06 to 09. They all lean bearish. That's what I meant by your mentality is going to be influenced by that period. 100%, 100%, and what you know about the market will, will be influenced. And that first touch, whatever that first touch is for you, it's going to have a lasting impact. It's going to have a lasting impact, yeah. and most people can't get over that first touch. Most yeah. people, just like, unfortunately, the friend that you just mentioned, just like the numerous friends that I have that went on crazy runs and then lost it all because the market changed, this goes on and on and on and on. But guess who lasts? The motherfucking test of time those that are mentally tough 
and those that they, they continue to, to center themselves around what they want in life, how they want to live, what they want to do, you know, and they focus on those things, man. That's, well, it that's, took me, so I, then I saw like, you know, 07, 09 was an 18 month bear market. I saw a 36 bear, month bear market. It was March of, March, April of 2000 to March, April, March of 03. Right, the tech crash. Because, yep. because it was a, not only the dot-com crash, we started to recover and then 9-11 happened and put us into a deeper recession. Right. You know, 9-11 was whatever, September of 01. So that was even a deeper recession. So then it really hit me. I was like, it, it really woke me up that I grew up in a period where stocks only went up and then it really hit me. There's going to be long periods, you know, when the Fed pulls a plug and we eventually finish this cycle, there'll be long periods where it'll suck. So- <laughs> it got me to wake up to that. And then the second part really quick about the experience their parents went through. If someone has a family member that, you know, Hey, I put a bunch of money in Dell or Intel or whatever it was in the nineties and made a fortune, their mentality is going to be affected by that. But if you're uh, did you burn my chicken? What's going on there? <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going. But if you grew up where you just saw your parents lose half their retirement in 02 and 2000 to 2003, and again, blew up 40, 50, 80% of the retirement, you hate the market. So that's where the Occupy Wall Street and the hatred and all these political people get involved. They're like, you know, You're hate right. everything about Wall Street because they probably were influenced by seeing family members, if not very close family members, lose a big chunk of the retirement twice. That's, that's what happened to my father. That's what happened to my father. That's, that's essentially why I had the motivation to do what I did. And, and it's like a, like a perfect storm of things. It's like you want something, but you don't want it enough to do the motherfucking work. And that's most people, right? And it's like, yeah. you need some kind of catalyst. You need some kind of reason. You need some kind of thing that sits in the pit of your soul that you just can't shake, man. And for me, it was, it was, it was my father, man. It was just getting him out of the fucking misery. He lost it. He lost it. He lost it, you know, because he was set to retire market tanks. He's looking at a fraction of what he had for retirement. So of course, like he's going crazy, man. So it was like time for me to step up and I took the shot and I wouldn't have taken that shot if I didn't have such a, such a reason and such a motivation and such a, connection to to the why you know and and that's difficult for some people to manifest for other people it's easier i mean for jordan he just the motherfucker just wanted to win man did you find, <laughs> did, you find did you find that affected you what happened to your dad did it affect your mentality definitely definitely 100 percent, man 100 percent. it affected me in different ways which i don't know if we'll go into now but no, for me like my father time. like has has been such a such a motivation from the negative side, positive side. I mean, you look at both sides, but it, then it's also about life and how, how to look at life properly and how to not lose yourself. Like, it doesn't matter how much money he has, he's a, he's a, he, and not, to, and I love the man. He's my father, man, but he's such a miserable fucking person. So even after he had the money, even after he had the money and hasn't had to work, you know, that misery just kind of sat with him and I didn't understand what it was. And I remember looking at him, I'm being like, all right, you have all this money. You're supposed to, you know, my assumption is you're solving all these problems with the money because I've been sold on this my whole life. You get the money and boom, you know, all the shit's, it's shit's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. And that's what happened to me the third time that I made it. I made it and I didn't feel anything, man. I didn't feel anything. And I realized like it wasn't the fucking money, but it took me so long to realize that shit. It wasn't the fucking money. Money allows you to step back, open up your time to think, to think about yourself and to, and to, you know, and to, and to question some of the things that you grew up with and to question all the bullshit that you believe money allows you to, tinker man and money allows you to do those kinds of things unfortunately we live in that kind of country where that's what you need to to be able to have some time to think about this shit 
We should be able to have this fucking time when we're 20 and we don't have any fucking money. But in reality, like we're all motivated to come out of college and fucking sling, man, and, and yeah. get this money and, and be comfortable and live in a you know lifestyle that's comfortable. And you don't even know why you want this shit. You just, you know, people just sell you a nice package on Instagram. And, and even your parents sell you a nice lifestyle. They want you to be married. They want you to, you know, have a nice job. They want you to have the kids. It's all set up there. And then finally you think about this shit and you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck, man? Like this shit ain't even what I want, man. This shit is it's not even what I want. Yeah, you so, get to your goal and then you're like, and then what? You know? And then what? And, but see, one of my biggest pet peeves, and I know a lot of people like this, they're obsessed with their account value going up. <sighs> but they are number one, the cheapest fucks in the world. They'll never ever spend it. Oh. And don't burn my chicken. And number two, and number two is they are very very unhappy people. It's sad, and man. it's one of my biggest pet peeves. I'm all for making money and doing well and having some consistency in your trading. But when it gets to the point where your account balance is your self worth and you're just obsessed with growing that number with no intentions of ever. I don't even mean spending it, even doing anything charitable or even enjoying it. That's the part where you have to take a step back and say, hey, there's more to life here because I don't care if you grow it to 100,000, a million, or 10 million or more, if you're just never going to do anything and never have any happiness in your life, you're just doomed. I don't care what you got. Exactly, man. Let me show, let me present to the, the, the users here. Let's Is that the finished product? Can I see that? That looks good. <laughs> who, that's dinner that's who knew, dinner who knew we were going to talk trading psychology and a cooking show all in once I, I, <laughs> I, I'm like multitasking over here all right well don't make me eat this thing in front of y'all man family hey, let's wrap this up what we'll do you want to wrap up. this up with um, uh, let me see what's a good uh, thing to talk about to wrap it up I mean we talked about the mental toughness I think that's important I mean the last part of my tweet was just I'll say real quick you know what what's going on in people's personal lives. A quick story, 2017 when it was one of those rare years. Market was up like 20%, but the market didn't correct more than 3%. And one yeah. of my buddies, it was like an X equals Y chart to straight up. One of my buddies was down over 30, 35% because he was going through a brutal divorce. And he was, he was angry and he was shorting and he was like pissed off at the market. So that's why one of the points, and you can finish with this as well, is I think the importance of having a clear head if you don't have it, you got to stay away from trading because it can really, really mess with your head. You got to do everything in your power to have a strong mental state, not just when you're approaching trading, but when you're approaching anything. That's what we talk about when I do these Luchi meets. That's that's all we talk about when I do these. And I yeah. wanted that's the reason why people will sit there for two hours. That's the reason why people will sit there for three hours and listen to me rant about this shit. It's simply because it's so fucking raw man it's so raw that life is going to change life is going to change you're going to break up with your girlfriend you're going to break up with your boyfriend you're going to freaking you know you're going to get your ass kicked you're going to lose a parent you're going to lose a friend your life is going to happen to you and most people who aren't there yet as far as the awareness what are you going to do you're going to go to the market and this is why again we go back to the market is going to show you who you are and the market is going to show you what you're doing whether you're paying attention or not it's going to give you the signals and that's why i talk about this shit because to me it's the only thing to talk about it's the only thing that matters anymore strategy doesn't fucking matter to me anymore what you're trading doesn't fucking matter to me anymore. Agree 100%. your p l doesn't fucking matter to me anymore it, it doesn't none of that shit matters who are you what are you trying to extract and who are you outside of the market? So let's leave it with that. Like figure who, figure out who the fuck you are outside of the market. If you don't have an answer to that question, you already know where you're going. You already know where it's going to end up. Amen, brother. Amen. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, this was great. We've got to do it again. We've got to grab Candy to do this as well because I know he can try, chime in with some great stuff. Hell I'm yeah. going to let you enjoy your dinner because I saw it piping hot and it looks good. So, <laughs> Thank you, brother. Enjoy, brother, and we'll talk soon. All right. Later, man. Thank you.